Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Fast of I, good evening, it's half past five. This is Update for Monday, 16th of October, 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news on the island. Background to that news, we've got sport and business and sea watch and travel updates. And the newsmakers in person this evening, Comister Bank makes history. The latest on the assisted dying bill, inquest rules, Jamie Barrow drowned, Ravens suffer disappointment in Manchester, and does Mackhold really have the best public lavatories? Man Benham, for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Fast to my Chanel Suku. Fast to my. The Chamber of Commerce is calling on Tesco to demonstrate an unparalleled commitment to the Isle of Man by stocking more Manx produce. It's written an open letter to the Chief Minister following the supermarket's buyout of ShopRite stores across the island. An inquest has found that a Ramsey man who went missing for two weeks died as a result of drowning. And campaign group Dignity in Dying has labelled the current blanket ban on assisting dying as unsafe, unfair and unregulated. A public meeting is set to take place on Thursday. In international news, the UK Prime Minister says six British citizens were killed in the Hamas attack in Israel and a further 10 are missing. He's also described the humanitarian situation in Gaza as grave and said the UK stands by British Muslims. A bus has crashed into a shop in Manchester city centre, leaving a number of people injured. Police, fire and ambulance crews are all on the scene at Piccadilly Gardens. And a 20-inch model of an X-Win Starfighter used in the original Star Wars movie has sold at auction for more than £2.5 million. Those were your headlines, News at 6. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face-to-face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Goromaya, thank you, Chanel, from the Runnels Way Met Office. There's no wind warning in operation at the moment. State of sea slight becoming moderate. And the three-day weather, well, tonight what you see is what you get. A lovely evening, clear spells, lots of blue sky. After dark, continuing clear spells. A fresh east southeast over down to 10 degrees. And for Tuesday, Jamert is dry with sunny spells, turning cloudy later in the day and a freshening east-southeasterly. Top temperature 13. Overnight, uh, outbreaks of rain and a strong southeasterly, minimum 11. Into Wednesday for Jacraine, intermittent heavy rain on a strong east-southeasterly, daylight maximum 14. Sunsets in about uh, 35, 40 minutes or so, 20 past 6, which means we're getting dark at 10 to 7. Low water, half past 7, high tide 19 minutes after 1 a.m., low tide tomorrow morning, 22 minutes to 8, and the sun rises at 11 minutes to 8. Manx Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674 573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. A Manx Bank, a household name on the Isle of Man, has made history. Conister Bank has gained a deposit-taking licence in the UK. Is it a significant move? Well, here's Managing Director Douglas Grant. The Manx Financial Group, which owns Conister Bank, has grown its balance sheet by uh, 30% in the last few years. It seems to be that kind of running rate. And indeed, in the first half of this year, we lent more than £180 But the population of the Isle of Man, the 85,000 of us. We only need so much credit. The opportunity always lies with the 68 million in the UK and over the last few years we've been expanding into the UK so this is an opportunity to start funding UK lending with UK deposits and Isle of Man lending with Isle of Man deposits. So it takes a pinch point out of the business but at the same time it gives us a solid platform for future growth. Isle of Man deposit market is 30 plus billion of which our target market uh, is about 5 to 6 billion. We only have 400 million so our market share is single digit. So there's bags of capacity in the Isle of Man market, but it just seems more correct to take some of the froth out of the Isle of Man market by saying, look, let's find 
another source of liquidity. And UK deposit taken is is a trillion a trillion pound uh, market. So that's a really good one for us to start looking at. And it's not something you just think about overnight. We've been planning this for the last 30 months. So it's been a long project. There's been a lot of commitment from a lot of staff. Uh, we are both sort of staff, both here and in the UK. But also more than that, I actually think it gives a kind of regulatory big tick for the Isle of Man government and for the Isle of Man FSA. It'll be the first time the FSA has been the lead regulator over the PRA and the FCA because this is the first time a licence has been granted to an Isle of Man institution uh, in the UK. The second reading of the assisted dying bill set to travel through the House of Keys later this month. Understandably, it's an issue that continues to provoke debate. Here's Beth Espy. Supporters and those who oppose the idea will be able to have their say about assisted dying at a public meeting being held in Douglas this Thursday. It's been organised by Dignity and Dying. Fran Hall, the organisation's campaigns and engagement manager, has been talking to Simon Richardson. Assisted dying is an issue that's consistently had high public support. 250 million people have access to assisted dying across the world. No country that's ever introduced assisted dying has ever repealed their laws. Why do you think there is this change of feeling? Could it be the lessening of the influence of the church in such matters? I don't know if that is the case necessarily. I think people are frustrated because they've often and seen loved ones suffer. But it's certainly not something everyone agrees with. Simon mentioned the church when he was talking to Fran. And last Thursday, almost 100 people representing local Christian churches of all denominations gathered in Douglas for a time of prayer ahead of the second reading of the assisted dying bill at the end of the month. Bill Leishman, pastor of Broadway Baptist Church in Douglas, hosted the evening on behalf of Churches Alive in Man. I've been really encouraged to see so many people engaging, wanting to be involved the issues around assisted dying they usually swing in their opinions that it seems like a natural thing why wouldn't I just have the right to have my life ended when I feel it's my time an issue of autonomy but then the more people get into it and actually find out about the arguments and the concerns and and actually how the mechanics of this thing works then people start to realise how dangerous it is especially for vulnerable people As ever you can find out more about this ongoing debate at manxradio.com Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates advising businesses and families since 1949 Visit Simcox.com or call 690-300. A Ramsey man who went missing for two weeks died as a result of drowning. The inquest into the death of 39-year-old Jamie Barrow was opened at Douglas Courthouse today. Here's Amy Griffiths. Mr Barrow was first reported missing on the 17th of September, having last been seen around Brookhill Road in Ramsey. His disappearance led to an extensive search and rescue effort from emergency services in the north of the island while they looked for him. After two weeks, his body was found by a fishing vessel in the sea off the coast of Ramsey. The inquest into his death heard a post-mortem found Mr Barrow, who was unemployed at the time of his death, died as a result of drowning. The exact date of his death was unknown, but said to be between the 16th of September and the 1st of October. The court heard a number of methods were used to identify his body, including his dental records and a notable scar on his right arm. A set of keys found with his body were also used to open a flat where Mr Barrow was known to be living. Coroner of inquest James Brooks passed his condolences to Mr Barrow's family before releasing his body. Investigations are continuing into Mr Barrow's death and the inquest has been adjourned to a later date. His funeral is due to take place on Thursday. Meanwhile, a fundraiser started by Jamie's family to thank the emergency services and other agencies that helped look for him has surpassed its target tenfold. They originally hoped £1,000 could be raised. After 72 hours, the total has climbed over £10,000. Jamie's cousin Faye Lloyd Howell says her jaw hit the floor when she saw the amount. It's been an absolutely amazing response from from everybody, the whole of the Manx community and I know a lot of people from the UK as well have been donating so we are truly blown away and, and very, very, very grateful to everybody. The metric signs on the mountain are showing no problems on the mountain road and the motor vessel Manxman just entering Douglas Bay at the moment should be on the link span in the next 15 minutes. FC Isle of Man suffered a 1-0 defeat away to West Didsbury and Chalton AFC on Saturday. The Ravens boss Paul Jones says it was a disappointing result but a strong performance from the bank side especially in the second half. They didn't create a huge amount first half. They scored from a cross 
you know, we switched off from that throw in and then they worked it to put the cross in and it was just one of those goals. It was just really unlucky to see the thing. And then our reaction second half was great. You know, we asked them to do a certain corner for the first corner and they did it and you scored. And I thought we were the dominant team then and they me didn't have loads of the ball, but I thought we were really, really comfortable. And we had a couple of opportunities to go ahead. I think on a different day, we'd have done better with and, you know, ultimately conceded a top corner free kick from about 25 yards out and debatable free kick, should we say. We're not, we're not convinced it was a strong enough challenge or um, Joe didn't get enough of the ball to give a free kick but you know the finish was, was very very good and, and that's been the difference really so on another day we play like that we, we steamroll a team and uh, we had a game plan I thought they delivered it in the main really really well so yeah disappointed with the result but you know those performances are still improving and you know hopefully they sit with those feelings of disappointment and frustration and, and use them to fuel the fire ready for a home game against squat up on Saturday you're unlucky as a team to concede two goals like that in a game of football when they're not our mistake they're just not goals that you know we can see are they so um, to get two of them in the same game to mean that we don't take any points away from a really good West Didsby side who are flying high in the league like you know we're disappointed and but it's good to be disappointed you know we, we were well in the game and could, on another day as I say the performance deserved a lot more so yeah we're really positive and, and looking forward to working hard this week and hopefully playing in front of a load of home fans because the travelling fans who came to watch us today and travel from the Isle of Man across the North West were fantastic and they were so loud and the lads really appreciate their support so hopefully we can replicate that and, and then sub on Saturday the bowl against Flossard Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company Mother vessel Manxman departed Heesham at 19 minutes past two as I mentioned she's in the bay at the moment will be into the harbour in the next 10 minutes or so and on to the links band this evening's departure 8.15 Ben McCree heads to Heesham getting there just before midnight the overnight departure 2.15 back to Douglas at 6 tomorrow morning the fast craft uh, left at 12 minutes before 2 this afternoon she's safely on the links span in the Mersey departing this evening at 7.15 back to Douglas at about a quarter to 11 and tomorrow morning's departure the Manxman heads from Douglas to Hesham at 8.45 follow the steam packet on Twitter for the latest sailing information well, it's often a public need. I'm talking about a public convenience. And on Manx Radio recently on Man in Line and on The Breakfast Show, we've been talking about public conveniences, toilets, lavatories, and when you need one. And whilst there are issues in certain areas, apparently the toilets in Mackauld are repeatedly held as some of the best. Here's Garth Commissioner Marinda Farga. What's so good about Mackauld public toilets? We do get told that they are beautiful. Those toilets were built fairly recently. The, the feedback I've got is that they are clean, they're, they're next to the car park, so they're handy for people to use, visiting the village and that. But what's really nice is the children of the Dune School all did a little tile and painted it themselves. It's beautiful, all different colours, with kind of manx scenes, mackled scenes, the lighthouse, three legs of man, the trams, the church. It looks like it's loved. People have said that to me, you know, because the children have taken an interest in it, hopefully it's not going to get vandalised, people will take care of it. It's beautiful. It's worth visiting the public toilets in Mackle just to see this artwork. It's not on the outside, it's inside. I mean, the history of it is that we needed disabled toilets in the village. We didn't have any and people who lived in the village where the old toilets were so basically we did an exchange a sort of land exchange with no disabled and needed money spent on them they took that into their property as it were to as part of their land and then they said well we'll build you which which were better that's how it came about so people worked together on it really got something better the only thing it's not right down in the village the other ones were, were much closer to the church but people don't seem to mind it's sound and they walk it's where the car park is so if you're parking for the church and the church hall toilets are there it actually looks like a little house from outside Manx Radio Business Briefing at 16 minutes before 6 hypnosis tumbled today after saying it'll no longer pay an interim dividend in order to make sure it complies with its debt covenants as it now expects lower payments from its American catalogue. The music rights owner says that its uh, independent portfolio valued has materially reduced its expectations.
expectations of industry-wide retroactive payments in relation to the U.S. Copyright Royalty Board's decision regarding royalties payable to songwriters for the period 2018 to 2022. As a result of this, paying a dividend could threaten the group's compliance with debt covenants. And for a full daily market report, go to RamseyCrookall.com. The global semiconductor industry has seen its share of instability since the pandemic, and now the Israel Hamas war threatens to add more. Bloomberg reports Intel, NVIDIA and Apple are amongst major firms with chip-making footprints in Israel, and the nation has regularly produced semiconductor startups the big companies often want to acquire. One immediate concern is the industry's workforce. Israel has called up 360,000 reservists for the war. Intel alone employs 12,800 people in five Israeli locations. NVIDIA has cancelled an AI summit slated for this weekend in Tel Aviv and has confirmed that one of its engineers were taken by Hamas during an attack on that music festival. Global firms could shift some operations to India or other nations if business is affected. The Stock Market Report, brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European markets closed higher as investors assessed the turmoil in the Middle East. The dollar eased, Brent oil futures steadied and gold fell due to technical selling after a strong rally in the previous session. And the numbers now from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London. The FTSE 100 is up four tenths of a percent at 7,630. The DAX in Frankfurt up a third of a percent at 15,237. A short time ago in New York City, the Dow Jones Industrial is up a percentage point at 34,005. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index up just over a percent at 13,550. And in the Midwest in Chicago, the S&P 500 up just over a percentage point at 4,371. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar 21.9 cents, one euro 15.6 cents and 22 South African rand 89.6 cents. Finally in commodities, gold's down half a percent at $1,921 per troy ounce and a barrel of Brent crude down one and a quarter percent at $89.78. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house of the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. (laughs) You should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. It's now over a week since we heard ShopRite selling all its stores to Tesco. And while the dust has settled, there are still some unanswered questions about how this move is going to affect the Isle of Man as a whole. Here's Treasury Minister Dr Alex Allenson. The answer is absolutely no. We have a VAT sharing agreement. Now, obviously, for foodstuffs, there isn't any VAT on it. But large retailers on the Isle of Man, whether that be Tesco, Marks and Spencers, the co-op, pay tax. It's at 10% on the of man. So the total amount from large retailers that the Treasury receive is in the order of 2.3 to 2.5 million pounds a year. That's not just from Tesco's, but that's from the whole sector. Tesco will never have a monopoly. We actually on the Isle of Man for a small island have a remarkable amount of choice here. But let's not forget the independent retailers. I mean, the one take home message from this is that if people are worried about not being able to get local produce, why don't you buy local? Why don't you go out there and support your local butcher, support your farmer's market, support your local farmers. Government have been asking people to do this for ages. We actually do very well, particularly when it comes down to food. So if you go into hospital, if your children go to school and have school meals there, the vast majority of that food is certainly locally sourced, if not locally produced. So government do a huge amount in terms of supporting the local economy by its own procurement procedures. But wider than that, we support the local economy through a whole range of aspects in terms of financial schemes, but also the subventions behind things like the meat plant, the flour mill as well, and close negotiations and and cooperation with a whole range of independent producers, such as the creamery, to help them export and actually market their their products, both domestically and internationally. The Department of Environment, Food and Agriculture and Department of Enterprise have been leading on this and approaching all the large local suppliers. We've got a whole range of meetings arranged over the next couple of weeks to take on board what their concerns are, but also what may be significant opportunities in terms of broadening out the range of outlets that they can sell from. 
Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Manx Radio Sport. Fast am I, Rianne Evans. Fast am I. Good evening. Well, starting in athletics in the Isle of Man half marathon record has been absolutely obliterated by local athlete Gemma Aston. She beat the long-standing record by more than two and a half minutes in Manchester at the weekend, completing the race in one hour, 11 minutes and 54 seconds. The time got Gemma the bronze medal in the England half marathon championship. Her time takes two minutes, 35 seconds off the previous Manx record, which had belonged to Brent Walker since 1991. Meanwhile, younger sister Sarah Aston had record-breaking success of her own in Portsmouth's Great South Run. She finished the 10-mile race in a time of 56 minutes and 4 seconds, taking 62 seconds off her own Isle of Man 10-mile record, which she set the previous year. And I'm sorry to leave you with some sad news from the sporting community. Tributes continue to be paid to a superb netballer and champion of emerging talent following her death last week. Sports clubs across the island have been remembering the contributions made by Mark McGee, who died peacefully at hospice on the 9th of October after valiantly fighting cancer for several years. Douglas Rugby Club says Marg was an integral part of the foundation of Douglas Minis, helping fundraising and organising the early tours and later to joining the board of the club. Isle of Man Netball says she was one of the founders of Balasala Netball Club. On court, she was always supportive of her team, offering advice and encouragement with a well-timed comment, cheer or smile. When Isle of Man Netball joined Europe Netball, Marg was in the thick of the transition and took on the role of team manager for the Isle of Man's very first four into international competition. And Margie also helped set up the Young Farmers Netball team, who say, we will never be able to thank Marg enough for the endless support and encouragement and most of all her patience helping develop us into the team we are today. Mark's funeral service will take place at 1pm on the 20th of October at Moran Church. The service is also going to be streamed at Douglas Rugby Club as the church is likely to exceed capacity. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronald's Way, the 4.30 EasyJet uh, from Bristol, delayed till about now, should be in any moment now. Uh, Consequently, the 10 to 6 Logan Air from Manchester came in 10 minutes early just to counterbalance it. Uh, next in balance, the 10 to 8 Logan Air from London City, the 20 power state returning patient transfer Logan Air from Liverpool, and the 25 to 9 EasyJet from London Gatwick. Outbound tonight, the 5 o'clock EasyJet back to Bristol delayed. Obviously, won't be going out until about 6 o'clock. Then it's the 6.25 Logan Air to Liverpool, showing on time. And then the 5 past 9 EasyJet back to London Gatwick, delayed at the moment until 25 past 9, fingers crossed. On the roads in Castletown, Queen Street's closed for resurfacing. You've got temporary closures on Back Hope Street in Castletown for hedge cutting and railing repairs. Temporary lights on King Edward Road in Groudle for patching works and temporary lights on the TT course at Belig Bridge for drainage work in St John's. Temporary lights on Peveril Road Peel for resurfacing. In Port St Mary, temporary lights at the junction of Queen's Road and Park Road for gas main work. In Douglas, Millennium Bridge closed tonight between, that's the one in the harbour by the way, 8 till midnight for maintenance work tonight and for the rest of this week. Temporary lights on Glen Crutchery Road at the roundabout with Victoria Road. Hillside Avenue closed for adjacent office window replacement. And of course, Newcastle Town Road's closed between Spring Valley Roundabout and the bottom of Richmond Hill. HH Motorcycles.im for all your motorcycle requirements. Southgate Industrial Estate, opposite Keyside Tyres. Call 665646. A Tinwall motion's been tabled for the October sitting of the court demanding better consultation with business and individuals ahead of any proposed government-funded scheme or capital project. In the name of Arbury Castle, Town and Maloo, MHK, Jason Morehouse. It's really linking back to what's been happening in the last two months with the wind farms. Over that period of time, the local residents have been in a terrible state. Their means to get answers has been FOI requests, contacting their MHKs and contacting contacting the chairman directly is just not being good enough. We've actually got real concern out there with too much information that's conflicting and it's just inappropriate. You know, just something as simple as the landing platform in Castletown. On the 21st of August, the chairman said he couldn't give me an answer to where it would be and then in an answer, a recent Tinwald answer, they said that there wouldn't be one. You just think, what is happening here? And there's so much uncertainty. Really, the motion is stating that going forward... 
Roads. If there's going to be a key project, local people should be fully informed of what is happening and there should be some person there who's actually designated to deal with inquiries and concerns and there's open dialogue because at the moment that just does not happen and it's going to be something that is a decision that's made without the real consideration of what people are thinking. In a small island where we all kind of think we should have a say, that's really concerning. In most cases you're actually looking at a relatively small number of people and also those people have got very specific concerns that can be dealt with quite quickly. Often those concerns actually are quite significant. Going back to the issues in the south, one of the key concerns is that that is an area of Heathland and the MUA have said that if it's Heathland the project won't be going ahead and it's just kind of one of those conflictory points that because it's not being discussed in an open forum, we're not getting the clarity, we're not getting the openness and we're not getting the solutions. The Isle of Man in 30 minutes. Update on Manx Radio with Andy Wind. Fast am I. Thanks for dropping by. It's four minutes before six and on the subject of the Southern Wind Farm after the news at six, Phil Gorn talks to Alistair Ramsey on whether or not the government has actually got permission for the Southern Wind Farm. The potential banning of electric training collars for dogs and cats in the island would bring uh, the Isle of Man into line with England and Wales. This matter's now out to public consultation till the 23rd of next month and political member for the Department of Environment is Dr Michelle Haywood, MHK, and she says why they're urging you to respond. I need to stress this is not about those tags that allow you to track your pets or that open the little magnetic cat flaps and allow your cat in and not the entire neighbourhood. So it's, it's really not about those. It is just about the collars that are capable of delivering either a shock or a noise or a, a spray of some sort to the animal. We know from the consultation we've done previously over the animal welfare but there was quite a lot of concern around this area. We get a number of reports. I think there's quite a, a significant chunk of the population that finds their use uncomfortable. I haven't found anyone yet that is really defending them but actually this is a chance to go out and say there may be some specific circumstances where this is justifiable and and how do we balance that or how do we control that whether it was retailed on the island or not find that one out and i'm not sure but actually you can buy so much stuff on the internet anyway that even if we'd stop them being sold on the island the chances are that people get hold of them so i think the safest way to go if we decide that we do need to legislate in this area would be to make that across the island in terms of the use drafting the regulations is already underway so this is a consultation on those draft regulations and i would hope we'd be able to introduce them to Tim Wald relatively soon, perhaps within the next two to three months, and certainly by the first start of 2024. And as the Animal Welfare Bill comes into place, then this will follow on. In some places, they're banned entirely. In other places, only certain versions are allowed. So the ones that have a perimeter fence that triggers them are still allowed in some jurisdictions. But the ones where you have a remote control where a human operates it and gives the dog a shock or a spray, they're banned. And so it's a bit of a variable picture. So we have looked at other jurisdictions, but I think we need to do what's right for us on the island. That's it for update tonight. Compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department. Thanks to newsreader Chanel Suku, producer Amy Griffiths, Phil Gorn, and Alistair Ramsey after six. The greatest hits with Chris Kindley at six thirty, and I'm back tomorrow at five thirty.